Hello, hello, it's your girl Bella Isis of LearnSpellCasting.org and today we are starting a new series called After the Spell, What Happens Next? And this was inspired by the tarot deck created by Corinne Kenner and Pietro Aligo and I have listed here Julia F. Masaglia, I may be saying the names wrong, and um, it's the After Tarot uh, deck cards. And that deck card, which is available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and various online and brick and mortar stores, it's a deck that explores what the cards would look like just moments after the usual scenes which we are most familiar with from the Rider Waite tarot deck. So um, the first picture you saw is the black and white version, the standard version, and then this picture that you're seeing now is from the uh, after tarot deck. So if you don't have it, they, they're really interesting, go ahead to Amazon.com. I will provide links in the description box. So what is this series about? This series, um, just like the tarot deck, explores. Let's say you cast your spell already. You're not looking to cast a spell. You already cast a spell. You lit the candle. You did whatever ritual um, you propose to do. And so what can you expect after you cast spells? that's the name of the series. Now I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to intertwine uh, the meanings of the tarot cards, all 78 of them, so this series will have 78 episodes. Okay, this is episode number one and we're starting with the Fool. And the purpose is to bring context and the vibe, if you will, the energy of each tarot card to situations and circumstances you may experience when you cast a spell and then you're sitting around and wondering what is happening. But one step further is that I'm going to assume you get what you desired. Your spell works and if you cast a spell to get a job and you're now employed you're in the job what happens next right or if you cast a spell to get to back together with an ex-lover okay you got the guy you got the girl what's next and I have in the five decades of casting spells, I have seen that my customers come back and they're related and they're like, oh my God, Bella, it worked, yada, yada. I've got him, I've got her, I'm working here. I bought the house, I sold the house, whatever the spell was for. But then they kind of think that that's it. There's no more work to do. And I'm not saying that you have to continue to cast spells. I'm talking about once you got what you wanted, what happens next? A lot of people ask me before casting spells, are the results permanent, for instance? You see? So that is what this series is all about. And I do invite you uh, to ask your own questions if you would like to have them um, answered here on my YouTube channel, Learn Spell Casting. Just head over to my website, learnspellcasting.org, and fit in the front page, you will see a questionnaire where you use to ask questions only that will be answered here. And it's got to be related to the topic what happens after you cast a spell? Okay? Don't include very personal things because I'm going to read them and I'm going to answer them for you. However, if you wish to speak to me privately about any spell concerns, including those you've already cast, whether with yourself or by yourself or with someone else, just head over to LearnSpellCasting.org and instead, if you want to just communicate with me privately, please click the Contact Us uh, link on that page. So let's get into this, man. So let's start the series with the very first card that shows up in the major arcana of the tarot, and it's the Fool. Now, the keywords for the Fool would be Embrace the Unknown. If you look at the Fool card, it is, I'm going to show you both, if you look at the full card, you will see that basically 
the per the fool the person is about to step up, step off a cliff and they're just happy and you know they're just hoping that everything is going to work out and turn out perfectly now i'm not calling you a fool if you cast a spell the fool card in the tarot deck doesn't mean you're an actual fool far from it what it probably means is that you have been hesitating at the precipice of a big decision and now because that's what this series is about now that you took the leap of faith right and you cast a spell you may feel nervous scared that the kind of choice that you made may change your whole life even forever or that even making a smaller choice even choosing that ex-lover instead of someone new for instance will definitely shake things up so the full card reminds us that after a while you have to stop considering all the possible options and just listen to your gut and just do it remember the Nike commercial just do it sometimes you just have to take that leap of faith and if you don't trust or have faith in the universe then you have to have faith in yourself and you have to believe that this is the new beginning of an adventure of a journey where you are going to explore and grow within this journey a spell pardon the pun is not a magic pill that solves every single problem because if that were the case there would be no longer problems on earth you have to recall and always keep in mind that life you're you're in this physical form to experience and to learn and to grow and to challenge yourself along the way until your journey ends until you're out of body and your spirit becomes one with source again so you have to understand that every time you cast a spell it's a brand new beginning you're taking a leap of faith just like the tarot card called the fool and you have to trust in yourself and you can't be paralyzed and because you're analyzing well will this do what will that do will we live happily ever after will I be promoted at the job will I even stay at that job will I when I change my career will I be successful I mean you just gotta live it that is truly honestly what you have to do you cast a spell because you thought maybe this will work and after you cast a spell you most of the time have to wait a little while till the spell takes effect but like this series tries to teach you after the spell is cast what happens next what happens when you wished upon a star and it manifested for you your dream came true if you've ever heard people like Oprah Winfrey um, the smartest richest people the most successful the most talented or just ordinary Joes that went for their dream and it came true for them and they're living the dream they will always tell you that that moment is exhilarating but after that moment you you treasure the experience and they almost always tell you that the journey before and then after is really what it what counts okay so think of it this way think a bit of a, like winning a lottery you you put in you wanted to live in a certain uh, apartment building I used to live in in big cities where they would have housing lotteries and the lo housing lotteries in the cities that I lived they would be by income for instance and I had friends and and people that would come to me and they would say oh my god Bella do a spell for me so that I win the housing lottery so that I can afford to live in a brand new place in a nice area or a central location and I would do the spell and they would win it and they'd be like yay but what happens after they move in 
Are they going to like it? Are they going to like their neighbors? Are they going to um, have problems with the super landlord maintenance person? Do you see what I'm trying to get at? When you cast a spell, it's a journey, a journey that you're beginning. And you always look at this journey as, man, what happens after I get it? How do I enjoy it? Take, for instance, you want to... Um, Let's, let's take it away from romantic love and let's put it in a familiar love, right? Um, let's say you have an old friend or perhaps a relative that you guys had a falling out and months, maybe years have passed and you no longer communicate with this person or they have blocked you out of their lives. And let's say you, you contact me or you find a spell or you create a spell where you wish to soothe past hurts mutually and perhaps reconnect with this individual. And so you cast a spell and it works. And the person and you finally have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And guess what? You guys smooth things out. So what happens thereafter? See, I don't want you to be short-sighted and only think about a spell that you want this and you don't think of anything else. Please have the presence of mind, the long-term goal. Well, what will I benefit? What is it that I actually want? So I have people come to me, uh, to my site, LearnSpellCasting.org, and they'll say, Bella, I want my man back. I want to go out with this girl and I don't know what to do. And I'll tell them, okay, well, you can cast a spell. You can do it yourself or if you can't for privacy reasons or because you desire uh, a more professional person that is not emotionally connected so that they can cast a spell properly without any negative energy right because sometimes we are in our feelings and we can't help ourselves sometimes we need a third party that's why we seek doctors even a doctor seeks a doctor because he can't heal himself he can't operate on himself you see what I'm saying so it's okay you can do it yourself or you can hire someone to do it for you and so let's say that you did this spell and you are now friends again but they may have changed a little, right? Their perspective in life and relationships may have modified the person you used to know. Or you yourself may have grown a bit, may have matured a bit. The sign that, that you try to reach out even through a spell means, man, maybe I had maybe I made some mistakes or I really miss this person and no one is quite like them so I want to reconnect these are all valid reasons and I want you to understand that the spell that you cast and and worked and gave you what you wanted that was just a first step right because like a plant needs daily water or weekly depending on the on the plant itself relationships need time they need you to spend time and energy in nurturing them so that they become beautiful and and flower and bloom so I I want you to not just think of your immediate goal which is fine that's your starting point but always remember just like the full uh, card that you see shown to you on the screen after you take that leap of faith, there's more to do. There's much more to work. And it may or may not, normally my spells don't need more than one spell casting. There are situations where things are complicated and there are many other parties involved where you actually do need to do a little more work. But once again, just like the beginning of this episode, I was going to say podcast, I don't know. But just like this episode that is showing you the very first card in any brand new tarot deck that is like the Rider Waite, the full card, notice the number, it's zero. You're starting from zero. Think of that as what is the potential 
of a spell after you cast it and once it has actually manifested you got your desires now things have to keep going there's more effort there's more enjoyment there's there's more work so please don't go into this fallacy f that we gather from TV shows and Hollywood movies about spell casting and witchcraft and uh, pagan crafts and re you know mystical religions and the occult they okay you cast a spell and forever that person is going to be yours they're gonna love you forever and ever amen do you know why I don't want you to think that way because you and I we started as 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 a baby then we, we became toddlers, then we grew up and became children, uh, preteens, teenagers, adults. And we keep growing. Even to the day you close your eyes, you change, you mature, you have more experiences. You don't see life the same way. So I need you to understand that you will continue to evolve and so will anyone else affected by the spell and so it is a journey it is only the beginning even after you get what you desire once again this is Bella Isis I hope you like this series there's 77 more to come so please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it this shows me that you appreciate the time that I have put together I'm trying to keep them short but if you want them longer I'll do that as well so just remember even when you get what you desire from a spell always remember it's only the beginning you are going to have to adjust and modify things within yourself I'm not talking about casting more spells I'm talking about be realistic if you're getting back together with an ex understand that things happened in the past so now you guys are working to forge a new future together okay you cannot have what was before you you have to keep looking in front not at the back view mirror for example so give this video a thumbs up that is my encouragement that is your way of applauding if you don't then I stop making them because I'm like okay well, they didn't like that you understand and I also want like you to subscribe if you haven't done so, so yet my tongue is getting tied and please remember click the notification bell to be um, prepared for the next video it'll go ding ding and you'll see a little thing and you will see that I have uploaded a new series there's 77 of them coming don't miss any they're going to be based on the tarot cards and I'm going to review each tarot card in terms of how does it connect what influence am I trying to perch to um, let you know about concerning what happens after you cast a spell this is the very first one so please subscribe if you haven't done so it's free click the like button and please have a beautiful day Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.